Well, then... <sighs> Good day. I'm just trying to think like what I could have done there to... This is why melee sucks until you're like in the super late game, because... Well, for hardcore anyway. Okay, but I do have all my gear, so that's fine. Like, I kept backups, so I'll be able to get back up there pretty quickly, I think. The only thing I did lose was the weapon and the shield, but other than that, I mean, I got replacements, so it's fine. It's no biggie. I am there is a play There's a lot of stuff in this game where it's an instant... Nope. <laughs> Just run. Fucking run. I didn't think that that would get me, though. Like, I thought I was on high health and was like... I don't know. It's possible I could have been cursed. Anyway. Uh, let's get some funds out. Yes? I knocked on wood, that was the problem. I was like, ah, oh, I'm doing quite well. Okay, let's get the most important thing early on. Just so I have more potion space. Not here. Sorry, I'll take the L. <laughs> I shall purge this land of the shadow. Hey, there we go. Hardcore is scary. You know, if I didn't play roguelikes, I don't think I'd ever play hardcore. I think playing roguelikes have kind of softened me up in terms of, uh... I hear foul creatures about. Like, not really thinking as much of death. It's like, oh, okay, cool, run's over, start a new run. That's the mentality I have. <laughs> Meanwhile, I've seen people break keyboards or controllers. Well, maybe this will end up on YouTube now. <laughs> anyway, if you're wondering why there's no music, because I'm listening to music on Discord, so... I just have the game audio playing. So I guess, yeah, maybe I could do something with this now. I don't know if it'd be off-putting to watch this without music. I guess the music's kind of subtle in this anyway, so... I'll watch it later and see. Cool. That's just gonna be something that I'll replace my current ones. This game has a lot of moments where, like, 
it'll just fuck you up completely. So I guess this isn't like a completely true attempt because I have died and I have gear, so it's not like a fresh from scratch thing, but I mean, it's fine. We won't get to see some of the tedium of like managing money. It's funny because the very first action RPG game I played was Titan Quest. And there was a character in the... Or a class, I should say, the, the Hunter. And there was someone that used javelins. That was the class I played in that. And then when I saw this, I was like, oh. Okay, that's where they get it from. sense. The only thing I don't like about this game is the stamina mechanics. Okay. I guess hold on to. I'm trying to remember how to do this. Yeah, hold on to it. Because I don't think I can get that yet. Okay. I'm getting enough strength to be able to wear heavy gear. Where is it? There's probably some minion somewhere that didn't die. There they are. Okay. Perhaps now the sisters will trust me. Diablo and Twitch didn't expect to see it. Yeah, I mean, I felt like it. Like, I wanted to stream, but I didn't really feel like doing Diablo. I'm not freaking. See, see how this is how tired I am. Doing anything like Isaac or whatever. Didn't feel like Yakuza. Cause reading. So I was like, alright, fuck it. I'll just. I'll just do a hardcore playthrough. I already had one going and it kind of went to shit immediately. Just super unlucky. So now I guess this is gonna be a thing. Or at the very least, I should record the footage now that I- when I play it. I don't know. I know some people enjoy Diablo, it's just like there's... There's not much of an overlap between, like, Diablo viewers and people that watch every other kind of game that I play, so... My... How's the update been treating me? To be honest, I haven't really played it. So I guess this would be my first pure look at the update. I did look at it a little, but nothing, I guess, notable. Yeah, I mean, it's only been a, a couple of times. Pretty much me playing the hardcore patch, that's about it. Good to see you. 
I do want to get back to where I was, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna do this. This is the easiest way to quickly progress. Um, is there anything else I can take with me? What level? Level A, I'll get that spear. Okay. It's a good thing there's a shared stash, because fucking hell, on this on vanilla, hardcore would be a nightmare. So there is, like, a little bit of wiggle room here. Alright, let me get some armor. Just temporarily. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Any quality of life changes. Uh, one of the big ones that I I have used already. Um, it's a controller thing, but it just makes controller play a lot better. There's... I should bind it. <laughs> this loot to cube. So you can now just directly loot to the cube, which means you can carry it and it's extra inventory space. So people do do that when they end up in the end game, but you still have to drag and drop into the cube, right, on mouse. But with this, you just press a button and it loots it directly to the cube. It's pretty awesome. Like, in some ways, that's better. There are some things that controller has in terms of quality of life that keyboard and mouse just hasn't received for some reason. Anyway, if I'm a Zonian, that's fine. Like, melee and throwing, you don't need to click to aim. From what I hear, they're changing the late game for the very next uh, ladder. Because the issue right now is reaching level 99, it's pretty much impossible to do if you're a single player. Did they fix melee targeting? Uh, the multi-stab attacks are still semi-automated, so not really, but I don't know if there's much you could do. I kind of learned anyway that if you're going to play melee, you need life you need a life steal item on the late game. Like the moment you get life on hit, it improves it. So I do know how to play melee now to some degree. Range is still the way to go because playing through the story, it sucks. <laughs> it really does. There's moments where you just have to take it really slow. I think I missed the waypoint. It's alright, I'll get it. Yeah, I mean, this game is a product of a different era. It's like... Difficulties, no fucks given. I'm kind of curious how 4 is going to be in terms of difficulty, if they're going to go for something like this. Because they are leaning heavy into the uh, Diablo 2 nostalgia, especially since all the classes are Diablo 2 classes so far. And, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Like, there's definitely elements of 3 in it, but I just wonder if the difficulty is going to be somewhere in the middle. <laughs> 3 was pretty difficult when it launched. It's just, I think the difficulty stemmed from pushing the auction house. You hope that I don't do any of the shenanigans for Immortal. Uh, I, I mean, they've already talked about their monetization plans. It was kind of funny. Like, 
a survey was sent out in Overwatch, and it was sent out for Diablo 2, asking about how much people would be willing to pay for s certain things. And so, you know, Reddit treated that as, oh, that's going to be the price. Now, the thing is, surveys are surveys. Like, sometimes they do have an impact, and they are trying to gauge, like, uh how much people are willing to pay. However, sometimes it means nothing, and sometimes it's not even done by the people developing the game. Like sometimes it's just the marketing division or something in a major company just decides to do that. Particularly in the case of Blizzard Activision, like, a while back there was that, uh, like, really really fucking bizarre what, what was it called it was like some matrix some chart thing but pretty much it was like almost like a database of characters that in activision blizzard franchises and then their scores in terms of diversity and ethnicity it was really fucking weird but it was something that pretty much the developers of every single title came out and said yeah we don't use that shit it's stupid so, the survey for money, how much to pay for Diablo and Overwatch, it may have been something done on that level. Anyway, long story short, um, the devs did come out and reveal how they're going to monetize Diablo 4 in pretty big detail. Uh, you know, season pass, battle pass format. So, seasons will be free to play. Um, but, you know, if you want cosmetics and stuff, that's the battle pass, more or less. Those are the only- cosmetics are the only things you're gonna pay for, pretty much. Rest in peace. And they didn't use any hedging language, like in... <laughs> like in Diablo Mortal, where the dude was like, No, no, well, you don't pay- f you don't pay for gear. It's like, what do you mean? You pay for gems, that's gear. It's like, no, gems aren't gear. They're gems. Like, the fucking semantics that Doodle's playing. Ridiculous. So they didn't do anything like that. It's, at this stage, it's battle pass, cosmetics, and you'll be able to earn a lot of those cosmetics through normal gameplay. I imagine they're going to be rare. So, that's fine. It's pretty much the Overwatch system, which is the lesser of the evils. Um, but, you know, a grain of salt. We'll see how it plays out. Um, still, like, cynical over it, but not as cynical as before. Because this time around, they, they kind of definitely went to the effort of making sure, yes, this is what we're doing. Um, yeah, I'm playing Diablo because this is what I feel like doing, and it's hardcore. There's also music on Discord if you want to listen in the Music Listen channel. That's why there's no game music, but, uh, that's fine. Uh, can I level that up? Not yet. You feel like Blizzard is the more evil of the conjoined companies. Yeah, I mean, look, let's not talk about Activision Blizzard. That's not what I want this to become. We all know, like, just the insanity and the shit that uh, has happened to them over the last three years. But, you know, Microsoft is in the process of purchasing them, and I'm hoping that... I mean, it seems like it's going to change them for the better, so we'll see. Should probably equip the defensive one. It'll still probably be another year before that becomes, uh, finalized. All I want from that process is just, uh, one person to no longer work there. I won't say his name, but I think you all know who I'm talking about. It's someone that has had, a. Uh, pretty annoying influence on the Australian gaming market. 
partly responsible for the regional pricing bullshit we have on digital titles. Him and whoever was in charge of EA at the time. Microsoft is big enough to not need those shady tactics that they've been using. Yeah, I mean... I don't imagine they're gonna go away with the battle pass, but at the very least, it's not gonna be as sinister. Yeah, like... Okay, it's... It's still going through regulatory bodies. So, this is a period now where, um... Pretty much governments around the world, um, well, mainly, it's mainly the US and the EU, um, can choose to ask for more information or they can oppose it. I think in the EU they're getting a little bit of pushback because they're worried that, um, how it's going to affect the gaming landscape because they do own a lot of IPs, right? Um, but Microsoft already did commit to still releasing all the Call of Duty franchises. All current Blizzard and Activision franchises on multi-platform console. So they did commit to that. And to be fair, like, they do do that. Um, like, look at Microsoft Studio stuff. Cuphead is, uh, is something that used to be an Xbox exclusive and they're releasing it on Switch. Um, they let Nintendo release Banjo in, uh, Smash Brothers. Like, they've been pretty lenient with their IP, I think. So, I mean, we'll see. I'm getting very lucky, I'm getting... XP Shrines. There's been a lot of devs and publishers being bought up. Yeah. And the reason is, um, I forgot where I read this, but the reason it's happening is most game companies have figured, um, that people only really have enough money for one or two live service games and then the rest of them they won't really play. So, like, it doesn't make too much financial sense for some game developers to do them anymore, if that makes sense. Like, the companies that are being bought up are the ones that um, do live service games, if you look at it. And I imagine the reason that's doing is there's going to be a war of subscription services, pretty much. Because people are more likely to pay for Game Pass or the PlayStation Premium subscription. And if they do that, they're probably not going to bother spending money on something like say, Overwatch. So I imagine what's going to happen is, and this is my prediction of it, all these game franchises, um, their Battle Pass systems will come from the subscription cost of, say, Game Pass. So it gives you more incentive to keep the Game Pass, which, yeah, I mean, that's what Microsoft is doing in the case of Blizzard Activision, like, it makes sense. The war is already happening with streaming services. Streaming services is its own beast. It's, uh... It's pretty annoying, actually, like, that we're kind of regressing to cable TV era. I need to go get more. Good morning. It's, like... I heard a word that, uh, made me kind of shudder a little. But Disney is experimenting with packages. Streaming packages. I'm like, gee, why does that sound familiar? Oh, it sounds like cable TV again. Might have to hit the high seas again. You know what I find really interesting? Music, for whatever reason. Music, for whatever reason, has been immune 
to this bullshit. Like, you don't see record labels trying to form their own streaming services. It just hasn't happened. Like, we're still pretty much ubiqu- Like, aside from... Maybe exclusivity on one platform, which happens in the music streaming services. Not that much. But it's not like Sony has started their own music streaming, or tried- like, had a successful one anyway. You know what I mean? Like, it's not every music label is trying to start a streaming service. It's pretty much, you can get what- you can get Spotify or Apple Music and for the most part have access to everything you need. There's no large holes in the library. Yeah, they're not- they're not the same, but, like... You're pretty well covered. It's not like... Current landscape of video streaming where... There's always something missing. Particularly in movies, like... I wanted to watch uh, Harold and Kumar recently, and so the the second movie was on pretty much every streaming service in Australia. The first one wasn't. Could not find it on any other services that I have, and that's that's the kind of nightmarish landscape that video is under. And for whatever reason. I guess TV executives is the answer to that. They're just a different breed. And they, they think they can go back to that old world where... Cable TV was their... Their thing that was making them lots of money. And they could divide things however they wanted to, make people... Pay extra. Didn't Google stop their service recently? Uh, I don't know, I think it's still there. I think they cancelled YouTube, sh YouTube, uh, produced series. But as far as YouTube and TV goes, you can still watch TV shows on YouTube. I, I believe that's what happened from memory. Speaking of this, you got to get Nord VPN. Nord? Okay, no. VPNs don't really work that well on streaming stuff anymore. They can detect them, unfortunately. Which is just like, oh, okay, no VPN. Cool, so you won't let me pay for your service and access content. You're going to prevent me from trying to access content because licensing. That's fine. Fuck me, then. No alternative. Like, I guess I'm just going to have to pay or wait or... Subscribe to 10 services. That's- that's totally the only remaining option, right? Right? Eh? Eh? <laughs> Why do you love piracy? Eh, hey, come on. You expect me to pay for three channels? No, wait, 10? Fuck that. <laughs> But, yeah, it's not gonna happen. Uh-oh. Yep, it's that ice explosion. YouTube Red isn't a thing, but YouTube Premium is. Okay. I'm being attacked. Um... Okay, and then get dodge, because we want to dodge. In case it wasn't obvious virtual hugging, <laughs> I am playing hardcore. So if I die, I die. That's why I'm being extra careful. Uh, 
All right, I just have to reiterate. I wish there was something that would be like, you know, it shows off. Just don't die. Yeah, I mean, I've already died. That ship has sailed, but now, I guess in terms of content, this can be something I upload because I wasn't really recording it before, but now I am because it's on Twitch. So maybe if there's enough interest in it, I'll keep it up. I won't necessarily stream it all the time, but I'll record it. I should probably go back and get my better weapon. Fucking freeze. Okay, just walk it off. Yeah, I mean, I've done the local recording stuff before. I just haven't really done stuff that only airs on YouTube, so to speak. Fuck. <laughs> oh. Lurking. Hey, Amy. How's it going? Not in town. Not here. Good day. Okay. Uh. It requires forty decks, so I should be leveling decks for the next two levels. Wait, thirty or forty? 40. Okay. So I need to level up decks. Not in town. Good day. Not here. Not it's here. going chilling, how about me? Uh, yeah, I've had a bit of a long week, so I'm just kicking back with this. Something I don't usually do. At least on stream. Okay, let me rebind. Now we have poison javelin. Not here. Now I have to hold mana potions. It's quite relaxing. Yeah, I do miss the times where I used to play three and listen to music. So. This is the best I can do is stream the game on Twitch and then listen to music through Discord. That's, that's about it. Uh, yeah, but now this should be easier because they're going to take poison damage. You're not at your PC or you would. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Was today the day that you were going to go uh, do that thing? I don't remember. Ooh, okay. That's for the follower. Let me drop these temporarily. I need to make her help me. There we go. Use. You're already at home recovering. Okay. Well. Hope all is well. Thank you. The thing. Yeah, well, you know. I need mana. I respect people's privacy, so if they tell me things, I'll keep things generic. 
You don't need to know about it. It's as simple as that. Just sending well wishes. Oh yeah, we're at the tree. What a strange looking tree. Uh I guess I'll drop these for now, just to make room. See, the thing is, right, I do have a way to stream the audio through Twitch and make it appear live, but not in the VOD. But I feel like, I don't know, live DMCA still fucking scares me. Like, it could happen at any point. That's fine. Where the fuck are the stone pillars? What I have to do here is, like, the equivalent of chugging energy drinks once I'm tired. Just to be able to keep running. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There's the book, but where's... I'll be fine. Like they're just there. It is okay. I need mana. I mean, I, I can see that they could have done the system around it, but you know. That. Put it into poison. Okay. It's as if they have buffed poison, so that's why I'm using it. It seems to perform better. Like lightning is good for clearing a lot of enemies quickly, but then poison is good for just dropping. Like, you drop a spear and then you run. Not enough and stuff dies. Does it stack or does it reset the timer? Uh, I'm not sure. That was some aggressive perking. The Amazonian is very good at single target damage. I think I just found the same shield again. Yeah, it's the same one. Any difference? 26, 27, 17. Okay. One defense difference is fine. Just getting this for the money. You load the body of a child and then take their leg. It's great. Deckard Kane, go to the rogue's camp without delay.
Okay, cool. There's the panic button. Purple potions are my panic buttons. <laughs> Red heals you slowly, purple heals you instantly, but for less. Not in town. Oh, can't use that yet. Uh, do we have any rings we can use? That amulet I already went no against. Okay. I know that that tab is like a little bit of a hot mess, but <laughs> it's fine. Wait, there's a picture of a cat? Where? Oh. Right. <laughs> I see. Just chillin'. Well, I always get made fun of for my organization stuff. It doesn't matter what game. Whether it's Stardew, whether... It's Terraria, whether it's Diablo, like, someone... Someone is always gonna be like, Well, your organization is such a mess, oh my god. And even when I go to the effort of organizing it, it's like... Not everyone's cup of tea. I've got the gems and runes organized, so that's enough, right? Organization in Terraria is the hardest thing, prove you wrong. I had a pretty good system in that ridiculously big map I did. I need mana. Probably somewhere here. Not enough mana. I still haven't become accustomed to like how stuff generates on the map. I'm not that level. Okay, one more level and I'll be able to swap to the uh, more permanent javelins. You get used to controller. I feel like people don't cut controller gameplay enough slack. This has been pretty well implemented, I think. I just like it because I can lean back in my chair and kind of kick back. Right, you hope with Diablo 4 they try to give us at least all the different Classes? What do you mean? I mean, the first few they've announced already are like, uh... Pretty much what you expect from this one. I need mana. Oh, 
I know that controller gameplay isn't the best for, like, say, sorceress or wizard type classes where you need to target from a distance, but yeah. it still works. Like, sorceress in this teleporting is a fixed distance, and then you get used to it. Sometimes reacting is is a little bit better, in my opinion, on controller, but... I do appreciate some of the quality of life stuff they've added here for the controllers. I don't know, I just found the... And I get it, it's a result of the game, right? I just... I found it a little clunky. Uh, let's give that to the mercenary. That to good use. Particularly around swapping certain abilities, like for some reason it would just change it. So I don't know, I, it didn't click with me because of uh, being used to how 3 played, but... Not this is closer to how I enjoy it. Oh, okay. That gave me the dex I needed. Sweet. Alright, we can ditch the jabs now. Not in town. I suppose I can keep like a stack on me just as a backup. You can't do this, can you? No. <laughs> I'll keep a stack on me as like a plan B. Oh, yeah, right, it's already identified. Your main class is Monk from D3. Oh, yeah, I used to play Monk as well. I was heavy into the Monk. Alright, so now I'm trying to get this belt, which is 60 strength. Then my potion juggling... Oh! Next level. Sweet. Because of the gear I'm wearing. Awesome. Wait. Oh, I went back manually, that's why. Well, the dexterity class in 4 is the assassin, so... I know that the assassin had abilities that kind of were similar to monk abilities, so maybe that's the one to play. I'm not sure. I think Thori did a good job in terms of, uh, like, making sure every character had an ability that would be considered as uh, moving quickly through the map. The one thing this game unfortunately have is, like, everyone will make a sorceress because that, by far, is the quickest way to move through a map. Like, there's just... There's no competition. Not enough mana. And it's pretty much Paladin and Sorceress. Those are the two that people always go. I mean, Amazonian gets good play as well. Demon Hunter was the movement class, was she? I don't know. I think m most characters, like, had a pretty good one. I thought Monk was quicker with Dashing Strike. If you were to get, like, cooldown reset on it, you can move through a map insanely quickly. Monk's, uh, Bell build was, like, probably the fastest speedrunning one. Kill an elite, reset your cooldown. Oh, shit, jeez. I hate it when that happens. That should not be allowed, but whatever. We deal with it. Elite directly on top of you as you go through the door. Like, it's- it's fucked. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 
it's, I suppose it depends what build you run with Monk, but Monk's uh, had a particular build that I think is unrivaled in terms of uh, moving around the map. Yep, that ice explosion is is a bitch. <laughs> okay, now we have access to that big boy belt. And then I think I need to get my decks to like equal footing and then we're good. Everything can go into health. What's missing? 60 strength, level 9. That's weird. It didn't auto transfer. Okay, and now my potion life is, is good. You. I probably should have grabbed that. Oh, it doesn't matter. I think I can buy it back, right? Yeah. Just buy it back. I know it's a waste, but I have money. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the realities. That should do me. You enjoyed the bosses in 3. It was fun taking on demon after demon and building your way up to Diablo. Diablo was a pushover. Yeah. It depends what you, when you started playing. Did you start playing at Reaper of Souls or uh, Vanilla? Because Vanilla, fucking hell, it was quite the trek to, uh, to beat it. I think I must have spent, like, at least three weeks on Act 2 on, uh, Inferno. Just getting together with a group of friends and trying to beat it, and then we'd go and farm for a while and try and beat it. It just... Apparently I didn't get the marsh. It's okay. I just wanted to get the tower done. Those mid ads stream mid stream ads have become more of annoying. Yeah. Twitch is rolling more of them. Like the whole thing is we're going to roll more ads. But then you the streamer will get more money. So you won't get annoyed. Was vanilla really like that? Yeah, dude, like in my three hundred-ish hours in vanilla. Do you want to take a guess how many legendaries I got? Take a guess how many legendaries I found in three hundred hours of gameplay. 
Like, re- it, it, <laughs> the game went from like find. I found one legendary. It wasn't. It wasn't for my class, and even then, the stats that it rolled. It was like. It was an item for a wizard, but it rolled strength, so it was pretty fucking useless. And that was my one legendary in 300 hours. Reaper of, Reaper of Souls came out, like, easily 15 legendaries in the first hour. One legendary in 300 hours. Yeah, dude. Like, the whole thing was they wanted to make the difficulty really, really hard on Inferno. And, I mean, you can get through it with yellow items, right? And blue items. But they really wanted the real money auction house to kind of take off. So that's why they stagnated the drops a little too much. And then in Reaper of Souls, they kind of, uh... They went the opposite route. They put too many drops in the game, and then what caused is, like, power creep, pretty much. Where people were saying, oh, the game's too easy. Okay, no worries. We're gonna change the game from four difficulties to four difficulties plus six levels of torment. A year passes. Oh, okay, no, the game's too easy again. Okay, let's just introduce another six difficulties. It goes up to torment 16 now. Like, it's just... The Paragon system and was probably the worst choice they made in Diablo 3, the way it was implemented. I don't think they needed to do an infinite late game. They could have done something like this. Now that I've played this, I understand why people hold this one to a higher standard than they do 3. There's just so many little things about this one that work better. Like, every item could be something good. Like, you gotta check your blues, you gotta check stuff that drops with a socket. Endgame builds can involve blues, like, it's ridiculous, it's cool. Wait, did I get the waypoint? I'm talking too much, so I'm not even... I may not have gotten the waypoint, and that's an important one. I also have minor, like, OCD about getting all the waypoints. <laughs> they actually reduced the legendary drop at one point due to bots getting too many of them. Yeah. Yeah, they did a bunch of stuff like that. Sorry, I don't, it's not like I'm speedrunning or anything. Like, I'm after survival. I, I did enjoy vanilla Diablo 3. As flawed as it was, I think it was a good experience overall, and Reaper, I think, went a little too far in terms of compensating for, uh, you know, the lack of drops. That might be the nostalgia talking, but I really do feel like that was, uh, the better experience when push comes to shove, if you know what I mean. Like, going back and playing three now in a season, it's kind of like the late game just becomes the same, it's just... You reach a certain point where then your growth in terms of the greater rifts, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, you progress, but then the power you gain is like less than 1%. Whereas in with this, like even at the highest end of gameplay, there's still areas that you kind of, you're not, you're not completely equipped to deal with, right? Because of immunities and whatnot. Diablo 3 was not a bad game the way you remember it. No, I think the way 
stuff worked and it was fine. Just the issue was the real money auction house ultimately. Like it just it drove a different itemization system. Like the crafting materials they made, you know, it was. It's kind of like how uh, mobile games have all those different currencies. That's how it was with crafting materials back then. Too many crafting materials to stagnate progression. So then you'd go to the real money auction house and maybe spend some money. Like that was their whole ploy. Had they not done any of that, it probably would have been a, like on point with this, I think. Maybe not completely because the art style it's it was something that was heavily um scrutinized but i do believe the game was it had a good foundation it just ultimately the decisions they made around how reaper of souls was going to work at the time it's what the community was asking for but it's one of those things where like i believe you should listen to customers to a certain point but sometimes, like, they don't know what they want. It's like... There's a famous saying, if, uh... If we listened to customers when it came to making... Uh, transportation, we'd have faster horses and not a car. Alright. Like, I felt like listening to the underlying problem and then coming up with your own solution is better. Yeah, there were a lot of crafting materials, and the gem- the gems, oh my god. The amount of money it cost to craft- or sorry, combine gems was insane, and then... Removing gems out of a socket also cost money. Which again, going back to the real money auction house, they wanted that to drive the economy. Oh shit, that's cursed. Okay, I need to be careful. This is why I like Poison Javelin a bit more at the start. I haven't tested the new Plague Javelin yet. Maybe I'll do it here. I did put a few points in it and I was using it, but maybe I'll go heavy on the Plague Javelin this time. Uh, put decks up. I think get them both to 60 and then I'll just put everything into health. That should be enough to get me through the difficulty of this. At least after playing this, I can see where, uh, like, Vanilla Diablo 3 got its whole, hey, this elite, you're not gonna get past it, thing. Because that is an occurrence in this. Oh shit, whoops. I'm trying to move through this as quick as I can. <laughs> But at the same time, erring on the side of caution.
Oh no, another elite. Back in a sec. Good day. Not here. Uh, at yes? this point, I. What level is she? Seven, and I am. Ten. Yeah, okay. Eventually, I'm just gonna rehire her. It's just easier than trying to level them up. What you need? I need to get to... how much dex? Wait, this doesn't have a dex requirement? Okay, so at level 11 I got that, and then that's 52 dex. Okay, so get to 55 dex, and then we're fine. What about strength? Strength, I think I need to get to... Thirty-six, thirty-eight. So forty strength. Oh, cool! I can wear these now. Sweet. Yeah. So like fifty-ish strength, and then I'll I'll be fine. Okay, which I think I have. So all right, nearly at those requirements. Good evening. That's the other thing about this. I feel more connected with the character. Three kind of lack that a little bit. Just a tad. Oh, I gotta look at the minimap sometimes. <laughs> As much as I don't want to say this with Diablo 4, I'm still, uh, like, I mean, I, I might change my mind closer to when it comes out, but I'm still of the mind to maybe waiting a week before getting it. I don't, I don't know, like, I've just become jaded in terms of AAA games, just not being what they say they are. Or just, like, sneaking things in that don't appear in the review versions. Like, it's, it's too much, so I don't know. It's a logical choice. I've done it... Ever since Cyberpunk, like... I've done two things. I've waited a week for certain games. And also, when games get revealed, if they don't show in-game footage, and they are releasing in the same year that they are announced, that is an instant don't buy. And it's steered me away from some pretty shitty games so far. Or at least ones that started in a horrible state. I think... The concern to me is, is more, uh... Okay. If I go back to how 3 launched, there were so many server issues in the first week. So that's one. And the other is, I don't know, like, there's still something pessimistic in me that... Okay. Hear me out. They ha they announced this whole battle pass system. I get it. But that's not going to happen right away. Like, Seasons is something that... It's content that generally comes out 
a bit later after release, after people have finished the story. Um, it's weird that if they would roll with that right off the bat. So whilst, you know, it's all well and good they've announced what they announced, a part of me still thinks, like, they could still change their mind about it. Or alter it in a manner. After people have purchased it, you know what I mean? Like, pulling out the rug, so to speak. Take Crash Bandicoot and, uh, how they did that. The Crash Bandicoot remakes were great. Crash Team Racing was announced. Super excited. You know. Looks very promising. It's still a good game, by the way. But, after release, the very first patch they did was to add microtransactions to it. After it was discussed that when the game would release, and I guess that's the language, right? Like, they were sneaky about it. That it would not have microtransactions. You know it's gotten better, but you'll never pick up No Man's Sky again just because of how it launched. You paid $60 for a game that was a space flying simulator. Yeah, I mean, look. It's, it's a bit tricky. The No Man's Sky situation, I guess, here's the thing. They lied, for sure. It was a case of, like, a small company kind of being, uh, overly marketed and the hype was too big and obviously they were never going to live up to it. But, at least they didn't abandon it. That's the thing, like, you look at... <sighs> Anthem. That fucking train wreck of a game. Where they announced something and they, they weren't even sure the direction the game was going in. Like, read, read into what happened with Anthem. Just the level of... Fucking... I don't even know the word to use here, but like... When they showed it off for the first time, literally the week before, the game had a different name. And what they showed was, like, all... Uh, rendered footage, and they had no idea what the mechanics were gonna be in that game. And when that game launched, like... It was something like the tutorial item... The item that you got from completing one of the early game things, basically... Could ultimately become the strongest item in the game. Because they just didn't design their systems properly. And, you know, they did what they could with it to get it into a playable state, but then that was it. Like, to my knowledge, they had this roadmap of uh, stuff they were going to do. I haven't looked into it, to be fair, so maybe they have continued it, but... I know that that roadmap was pushed back multiple times. Like, oh yeah, uh, yeah it's not gonna happen anytime soon. For a game that was full retail price and everything, so it was a bit scummy. February 2021 is development that was discontinued. There you go. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense because at that point other stuff has come out and with that genre of games, people do move on. That's, that's the thing. Anthem was just a sad case of developers being forced to reveal something. It wasn't just that. It was like... A case of where the executives just wanted something released and they just didn't, like, they showed them conceptual footage, basically, of what the game could look like visually, without any thought into systems, right? Or what the gameplay loop would be. And the execs were like, yep, let's roll with it, announcing it at the next uh, major trade show. We'll figure it out along the way. Slap a release date on it, get people pre-ordering. Like, it was wild. 
And it wasn't until like uh, employees kind of came out and talked about it and how horrible it was to be working at the company that uh yeah all of that came to light I need mana and this is why I, I tend to play indie games more than anything or older games it's just more reliable there's no need to do hasty things for the sake of appeasing shareholders and making sure that, like, uh, financial goals are met. You know, that sort of shit. I need mana. Pretty much what happened with Anthem was, like, imagine going to a bar and you're talking to your friend who's in charge of the gaming company and you know you're just spitballing about a game idea and you put the idea down on a napkin and then dude turns around and is like great i just announced it it's coming out next year it's like what the fuck dude this, this is just a fucking napkin it's like yeah yeah but it's a picture people will get the idea like that's the equivalent of what happened <laughs> to an extreme I mean, what I love about this game is the fact that I can do this at any time. This is, one of, this is an impressive remake. If I want to feel like I'm playing the classic, I do this. It's kind of impressive that I can do that. finding the doors here. I'm trying to figure out where it was. I don't care so much about the follower. I'll just rehire her and then she'll level up. At this point in the game, she's not that important. I feel like these big companies don't remember that if they produce something polished, they can make more money. Uh, I mean... I don't think that's the case. I think if people are going to buy the game, they're going to buy it. It's just one of those things where I, they, they realize that they can uh, use people's nostalgia pretty much to sell stuff. Which is why, if you notice instead of coming up with new franchises they just stick to the same ones right they just use the established franchises name to sell shit Stay a while and they know that they don't have to polish it greetings because for whatever reason we've accepted that yeah i mean they'll patch it like that's just become something that for whatever reason is acceptable good day not here Hello. I don't know. <laughs> I 
I think back to when Modern Warfare 2 first came out and how people were freaking pissed. I don't even remember what they were angry about, but like, it started a group where it was Boycott Call of Duty. Had thousands upon thousands of members, and then the day Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 released, everyone practically, I'd say like, a, a good 80% of the people in that group were playing the game. You would visit that group, it was funny, you would visit that group on Steam, and then <laughs> pretty much everyone was in-game playing it. And that's why game, like, those AAA companies don't need to try, because that's just the thing. People don't stick to their convictions when it comes to gaming as a whole. Do I mean Call of Duty Online? Nah, Modern Warfare 2, dude. This is like... Psh, long time ago. This isn't a recent thing. This is like... 10 years ago. Maybe longer. No, longer. I think it's like approaching 15 years ago. I don't remember what year that game came out in, but yeah. I was in university at the time, so. It was a while ago. For some reason, you thought I meant Modern Warfare 2019. No, I mean, that's why I elaborated and said the original one. Oh, what... What is this garbage room? Oh, it's lagging. No. Okay, I need, to, I need to step away from that room. I fucking hate when summoners, like, they throw four summoners in a room. Because it just becomes this thing where... You can't get through. You kill something, they resur one of them will resurrect it instantly. It's so annoying. I'm hoping that's not the way I have to go, because that will f I might have to reset. It's too risky. Dex. One more in Dex and then everything else will go to health. Okay, well that's the doorway. Mm, I got the feeling that that's... Alright, let's just have a look. Hopefully I don't have to go through that doorway. I was in the middle of talking and then boom, uh, yeah. Yep, that'll happen. Sorry, th th there's just nothing I can do about it. I'll put that to good use. Yeah, I don't know. I. I stopped buying those games after uh, Battlefield 3, which was like a very long time ago. And what made me stop was, so I bought that game, right? And uh, they had a early access beta. So I, I was like, cool, I'm gonna play this game for sure, I'll, I'll do the thing and pre-order it, fuck it. And so I pre-order it, I get the beta, I play it. And then, you know, five minutes into playing it, I'm running around, and then my character just looks at at the sky and starts spinning around in a circle rapidly. 
and I can't stop it. The camera just gets locked to the sky and is spinning around in a circle. So, uh, un literally unplayable. Go on the forums, try to see if anyone else is experiencing this issue. Uh, yep, it's a known issue with certain Logitech mice. You know, and I was like, okay, fuck, that sucks, but whatever, it's the beta. It's clearly a known issue, like, a lot of people are being affected by it, they'll fix it for release. Game releases was not fixed, and even worse, the patch took, like, a month. Roughly a month, I remember, for them to patch that out. So for a month, I had paid, this, paid for this game and couldn't, couldn't play it. Literally unplayable. And then, when I finally did get around to playing it, everyone was just a higher rank than me and everything, and it just wasn't fun. And at that point, like, the production cycles for these games was already starting to become quite, uh, quite tight, and the games were certainly dropping in quality, like, you could see it. The games were buggy, and I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back, I'm like, nah. I'm not paying for these games anymore. They're just becoming as bad as the uh, the sports games that get released every year. Because they have to release a new one every year. Do I get more money from ads or subs? Uh, ads pretty much give fuck all money. Even with what they did, it, it's nothing. Like, I've said this before, and, okay, aside from people that rely on Twitch, like, providing them some extra income, this doesn't apply to them. But if you want to support, like, a smaller streamer, the best thing you can do, it's not so much the money thing, right? For me, like, money, whilst great... I am thankful to say that I live pretty comfortably, and, uh, you know, my job lets me do this, right? I don't have to stress. Um, so, any money I make on Twitch, I put it back into the stream, like, with upgrades, right? Like, I've gotten the better microphones, I've gotten the capture cards, i got, like, the way to capture DS games. Just numerous shit that I get to do more content, right? It always goes towards that. But, you know... I'm not using Twitch to help me survive. Let me put it that way. So... For me, it's like... I, I appreciate it when people... Like, right there, Doc. <laughs> Thanks for the sub. Like, give me money. But for a smaller streamer, I think... And it's kind of fucked up, but, like, anything that helps fuel the algorithm, so to speak, helps a smaller streamer a lot more. It's more valuable than money, I think, anyway. Like, in terms of YouTube... You know, like, the cliche where every video has like, follow, and subscribe, and comment. Tell me what you're thinking. The reason they do that is because if you do- if your viewers do do that for you, um, your stuff ends up in recommended videos, and then your channel grows. Like, that's just how it is. And on Twitch, it's unfortunate, but from what I gather, What drives, like, things appearing, or viewers getting recommended your, uh, your channel. Part of it is, I believe, how busy the chat is, like, people chatting. And, of course, the other one is, uh, like, recently they made it so people are, like, giving away subs or bits. Like, you get the hype train thing, and then that puts you on a... Into the algorithm of, like, discoverable channels. But, you know, that's money. Yeah, we talked about it before, but, I mean, it's fine to reiterate. Mm. 
the, there's always been this debate amongst streamers around the concept of a lurker and like there are people that say that lurkers aren't valuable at all like because they don't contribute to your algorithm so to speak which i don't know i take issue with that it's like Another thing that matters is is number at the end of the day. It's like when people are browsing by a game category, if you have more viewers and, you know, they're lurking, that still p puts you higher. You don't have to scroll further down to find that person's stream. So it's like lurkers are valuable. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, they're doing everything that they should be doing but no one's gonna do that like you can't ask people to do literally everything in their power to like be the perfect viewer that's fucking stupid dude you read that downloading a video with youtube premium counts as 100 percent view huh interesting did not know that So I don't know. Like, streaming is a tricky landscape. But I guess I'll, I'll say it, like... For me, I appreciate any kind of support I get. Like, the mere fact that people spend some time here, given the sheer number of streamers there are on the internet, like... Yeah, it's, it's humbling for sure. Good evening. But if you were to ask me how you can help, that's the uh, that's the simplest thing. Is like keep keep your money, <laughs> keep your money. Half of it goes to Papa Be Bezos for starters. But the other thing is, is like just all that other stuff. Like yeah, it helps more in the long run than. Just, like, fueling the Papa Bezos, uh, money machine. At least the other half is going to me. Yeah, I know, but, like, YouTube has a better split. Of course, YouTube has its issues as well, right? Like, it's, it's not perfect, but... I mean, part of this is on me as well. Like, if I truly wanted to push being a streamer in less of a casual sense, I should be, uh, I should be asking people to do all that aforementioned stuff. But, I don't know. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Then it would feel like I'm at work, <laughs> so I don't want it to get to that point. YouTube has issues, so why not push towards YouTube? Okay, it's got nothing to do with exclusivity. Here's the thing. To be successful on YouTube, I would then have to start marketing myself properly. Like, I would have to... I'd have to be asking people to like, follow, subscribe, all that stuff. It would, it would have to be a reality. This maiden shall inflict no more It's one of these things that I'm perfectly capable of, right? Like, I know what needs to get done. Heck, I do some of it for work, right? Like, Hello. we have to do a little bit of social media for work. To promote our products and stuff. So I know what's required. It's just... For me, this was always... I don't know. Just casual, creative outlet type thing. And yeah, partners do get a, a better deal sometimes. But that's when you're absolutely massive. Like, at that point, yeah. It's, 
yeah. To earn good money with streaming, it means it has to become my job. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I could still keep it in a manner where it's casual, right? And it doesn't become my job, but then I'm kind of... And I hate to use the terminology, but, like, doing a push, so to speak. Good day. Like, yeah. I'd, I'd have to be honest and be, like... Yeah, partner push. I hate that phrase because... I don't know, to me it has this connotation that you care, you just care about numbers and you don't see people as people. That's, that's my opinion, that's a bit of a hot take. I hate seeing partner push in the stream title, like, it, it just puts me off. But yeah, I mean... I don't know. I feel like I'm talking about myself too much here. <laughs> Sorry that this is a little too self-indulgent, but... What level is she? Eight, twelve... Yeah, I mean, it's within reason. What's my next upgrade? Oh. No, but wait, that's 12 to 30, 20. Interesting. But this one's better. No, this is the next upgrade, 18. This is literally my stream. No, I know, but l listen. that There is truth to that, but at the same time as a streamer, at a certain point, you, it's not complete ownership, like, part of that ownership does fall on the community that you build as well. Like, you can't, you can't be like, ah, this is mine, fuck you guys, it's like whatever I want. Not, not that I'm suggesting that, it's just... The stream is only as good as the community that it fosters, in my opinion. Because that, at the end of the day, fuels what the streamer talks about. I don't know. I can be a little self-conscious about talking about the streaming topic, I guess. I just worry that it might be perceived as, like, uh, me complaining, which I'm not. Didn't rate it that way, that's fine. No, I, I get it, like... <laughs> it comes with the territory, like, you, when you're streaming, you sometimes invent scenarios or chat members in your head. Which might not be the case, but I don't know. Maybe one day I'll get over the whole, like... Just being worried about asking people to do stuff. Thank you. Maybe one day. This always comes when someone, like... Okay. I know people mean well by this comment, right? But it's definitely something that puts it in the forefront of my mind, is like when someone says, Wow, I'm surprised you don't have more viewers. Where it's like, it comes from a place of, you know, someone 
genuinely thinking that your content is something that is good enough to warrant like a large enough audience base. But at the same time, it puts it like on your mind. It's like, huh, yeah, maybe I should like make more of an effort to market myself. Uh, hang on, let me read this for a sec. I need to be careful with the distribution here. That comes at 18, what level am I? That's ready. That's at 18. Yeah, okay, so I need to hold on to points. Where's the like button? You're gonna crush it. Oh my god. Uh. No, literally, like... What people do in regards to that, like, the whole like thing... They'll, un they'll have stuff in a Discord server, they'll have a channel, and then they'll be like, Hey! Everyone, can you please go like this video for me? Appreciate it, thanks. That's pretty much what you have to do. Wait, talking about imposter syndrome, do I feel like... Or can I comprehend that I am liked by random people online to what I do slash make? Yeah, I mean, I do. Streaming is is a very it's harder than you think, on multiple fronts. The problem is the metric of success is like put upon you constantly. Like YouTube will talk to you about viewer numbers, how many hours people are watching your content, the average duration. Of, uh, how long people watch your videos for, right? And that's the thing with any creative outlet, is, like, when you put energy into it, and, you know, you feel good about it, but then, I guess, let's say the response is lukewarm or non-existent, it does put you in a little bit of a negative mind state, right? But... The fucked up thing is that it's not because the content might necessarily be bad. It might be that you just, you're not in the algorithm. And that's just the case of what happens when you're a smaller streamer. Is like, you're lucky if your content hits a larger audience sometimes. And it, you, you, it's impossible to tell which is it. Like, whether, like, you've done something wrong or you're boring or... Just, it's not what people are into. Like, it's, it's fucking rough. And then on Twitch, it's kind of... The view account, I guess, is, is the metric, right? And then in your dashboard, you're getting, like, little... Little things that say, hey... You need to reach, like, this average number of viewers and stuff, and... I don't know. But at the same time, like... I guess one of the most helpful things I've heard with regards to that... Uh, a stream I respect very much, like, uh, you know, I think I've talked about him before, but Vinny, one of the largest streamers, Vine Source, like, very early on, he was talking about streaming in general and how it, a lot of it for him was luck-based, but one thing that grounds him is, like, at least early on, was you just need to imagine that you're in a room, and just imagine having, like, three people watching you play a game. Like, that's something. If you've grown up with video games, like, just having three of your friends or relatives watching you do anything is a big deal. And you should not lose that. I guess. It's like, it's harder to... To quantify that, because it's like, you might start off with three viewers, and then... You know, you're really happy that you've gone up from one. It's like, wow, now I actually have people watching. But then when that becomes the norm and then you reach the new high of, like, let's say, seven, 
then you're kind of sad when you go back down to three, even though you were perfectly happy with three to begin with. It's kind of a fucked up thing, but it, it happens, right? And I guess the other one is, like, streamers is there. Everyone fucking does it these days. It's really hard to stand out. It's not as easy as it used to be to... Not that it was easy, easy, right? But... If anyone spends an hour with you, if you consider this, given all the stuff that people go through in a day, like living their day-to-day -day life, and the fact that there are just probably... They follow, like, a lot of people on Twitch, most likely. By a lot, I mean, like, even if it was just five, that's still quite a bit. Five streamers putting out content constantly, right? There's just not enough time in a day to catch everyone's content. So if someone is spending that time with you, like, at least an hour... I don't want to quantify it too much, but it's just... Yeah, it's another thing where just don't forget that, I guess. Um, anyway. Streaming is always, like, a battle between trying to remember that fact and just, like, thinking there's some milestone you need to meet, or, like, thinking, oh, shit, have I done something wrong? When you're a smaller streamer, anyway, I don't know. I stand out like a sore thumb, my profile picture is a tilde. Yeah, but... Visually distinct and, uh, like... Again, it's all algorithm-driven, unless you go browse in a category. I don't know. You heard from another streamer that he got very stressed every time he saw the viewer number drop even by one. Yeah, it's a common thing. It leads to burnout. Wait, why am I here? I should be in two. My bad. Yes? Like, content creator burnout is a real thing because... When you get to the high end of, uh, like, content creation, if you're not putting out content on a regular basis, it pulls you out of the algorithm and people's feeds. Like, even if people are subscribed to you, you your content might stop appearing on their feeds, and it's just this downward spiral. I was supposed to go here, but then for whatever reason I went back to one. I'm focusing on the combo, not the game, but that's what I do with Diablo. Like, I'm able to play this game and completely shut off and play it and autopilot. And this is with hardcore as well, right? <laughs> I don't know what it is about this game, but I'm just able to do that. It's fine, like, it gave me more XP. Honestly, probably for the better, because... This act can be brutal. I need mana. Anyway. But that was a very long answer to a question on, like, whether I'm cognizant of the fact that people like my cog content. <laughs> I, I am aware, it's just... It's, it's a constant battle. I guess. Thank you. Okay, now we go into vitality. Honestly, to be honest, 
See, honestly, to be honest, see, that, that sentence there, great. Great way to start a sentence. To be honest, I'm surprised I was able to express that, like, without much hiccup. I love the quick sack button, that works so well. Not enough mana. Abstract things, for instance, emotions are notoriously hard to convey unless you're in a similar or have been in a similar situation. Yeah. I think with this, it's easier to express just because it's not something that's new. It's not a new thought, so to speak. Like I said, like, whether I express it or not, it's something that does come to mind, like, anytime the topic of, like, popularity comes up, I guess. Whether directly or indirectly. Not enough mana. I think I was just, like, slightly too late to the Twitch thing. <laughs> if I was to, like, put it down. If I had started streaming, like, ten years sooner, things would be a bit different, I think. But ten years sooner meant, like, a bad internet connection, which was incapable anyway. Because I live in Australia. Not enough mana. You can't say with the streaming business you have ideas as you what you would want to do. Not sure if you can meet said requirements through lack of knowledge and lack of marketable strategies to get that leap. Yeah, I mean, I can speak from my experience pretty much is like the most important thing. Whoever your first viewers are, just make sure you treat them as equal as, and onboard them and be honest. And if someone's being an arsehole or... Well, not, not necessarily an arsehole, but okay. There's just... There's certain people that just with a few interactions, you can kind of tell they're going to be trouble. And it might be tempting as a... Uh, a small streamer to kind of keep them around because they're a viewer and it'll help and... Here's the thing. It's the simplest way I can put it is like monkey see, monkey do. If you have someone kind of behaving that way in chat, then most likely it's going to attract more of that kind of person. So if someone's like being courteous and nice and having legit conversations with you, then most likely other people like that will be attracted to the stream. Which is why, like, when it comes to me, if people are, are speaking to me purely in terms of, like, just textbook Twitch chat, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't tend to uh, engage in it that much. I just don't- I never wanted this to end up as a thing where, like, chat is constantly just- And I've seen streams that have this, right? Where chat is just constantly 
almost semi making fun of the streamer, but not really. It's just all just constant jabs. At the end of the day, there's no, like, silver bullet to success, but there are things you can do in general. In terms of, like, self-marketing, I think... Don't be afraid to ask for help, that's one thing. That A rule that I don't follow, as well as I could. Good day. Don't be afraid to ask others to do things for you. And you do not need... Don't be self-conscious about audio or stream quality. Because let me tell you, I've had very horrible audio and I've had very horrible video quality and people still stuck around. You don't have to spend like a metric fuck ton just to get started. Wait, hosting is going to be a thing of the past. I, I did hear that. Um, it's interesting because it wasn't really used that much. I guess that's why they're getting rid of it. But, okay, here's the thing. When you raid someone, right? I'm, I don't think this is knowledge to viewers, but when a streamer raids someone... That, like, let's say I raid someone with 10 viewers, right? And those 10 viewers stick around for that person's stream. That, those 10 viewers don't count towards their av average view account. But if I was to host them instead, they do. So that's why, like, when people do, at least I don't know if that's the case anymore. When people are doing those partner pushes and help- and, like, getting others to, um, help them out. They would do hosting instead of raiding, because then the numbers did count. That is the number one thing you were self-conscious about. You were about to spend a thousand dollars on a camera and mic to not sound or look like crap. I mean, I would say the microphone is important, but not that important. Like, I started personally with my headset mic. And then I moved to an $80 microphone. Then I made the mistake of buying a Blue Yeti. <laughs> and then I bought my mixer combo with a certain uh, mic. Like, the mic that I got with my mixer, it was alright. It was like middle range. And then last year, uh, work gave us gift cards to like this electronic store. So I upgraded and got myself a very good podcaster mic. And that was- that's over the course of, like, six years. Roughly. So... I don't think- Here's the thing. If you spend all that money, it's gonna make you more self-conscious of the fact that you might not be growing as fast as you do. All those lovely, like, thoughts in the back of your mind about success will- will amplify a little because of the money you've put in. And, like, in your mind, you would be thinking, man, I put all this money into production, why aren't people watching me? Like, I'm better than some of the people that put no effort into production. And that's the fucked up thing, is like, it doesn't guarantee it. Just because you go spend hundreds of dollars on gear doesn't mean that it's gonna guarantee growth. I think you're better off just starting. Go bare bones. And try... Yeah, don't be afraid if you don't figure it out. Yes, citizen. The current... I'm not gonna call it a format, but like, the way I do things currently... It didn't really become apparent to me that that was the way I wanted to do things until like... Probably just before the pandemic. Maybe 2019. But before that, I, I was a little bit guilty of uh trying to think about like oh is this going to be something i can upload to youtube is this something just too many thoughts around content itself and then one day i kind of realized that just i guess my strength is in 
doing stuff that there's two sides of it people sometimes will put me on just to kick back and chill and i've been told multiple times that my voice does wonders for that kind of stuff and then there are people that will watch me play a game and they're entertained by higher reactor stuff so i was like okay so mixing to the two together it's like sometimes i'll do chill stuff and sometimes i'll do stuff where i'm suffering so chill and salt and then i figured it out but you know, that was four years in. So don't feel like you need to figure out everything right away. You'll know, you'll know eventually, like, what works for you. A USB mic. I need yeah. Blue Yeti is cheap, but a good mic. Ah. Uh, okay. Here's the thing. I know there are people that have Yetis and blue microphones that have no issues, but I'm telling you, I had nothing but problems with mine. It's- it's a case of these things where, like, a, the form factor is convenient. And if it works for you, great. But when you have issues, you have really bad issues with them. It's the same with Elgato, like... I know people that have Elgato stuff that have had no issues whatsoever. Ever. I have issues and, you know, it's annoying, but it's minor and I have found a way to deal with it. I just reset the capture card. Which, by the way, did I do here? I don't think I did. I should probably do it just in case. I'll do it again. Um... But yeah. No issues, cool. It's random. Like, sometimes if I don't do that, the audio will start, uh, doing little crackles and little, like, micro skips. So, thankfully, that didn't happen this time around, but people usually tell me. Anyway, uh, the Yeti was kind of the same thing. Like, I'd have periods where it would work and it would work fine, but then I would have periods where, like, noise would start coming through or to ha I'd have to reconfigure my settings in terms of like volume sometimes it would just get insanely loud for whatever reason no idea why peaking was an issue with it for me there'd be times where I would go like two months it would be perfectly fine and then one day people would be like whoa the audio is really bad and then that VOD was ruined that's why there's, like, from that era, there's, uh, there's a lot of content that I didn't end up keep because, like, it got ruined by that microphone. So my recommendation would be, if you're going to go a USB mic, don't go, don't go a blue microphone. It's like, this, it's the equivalent of get, getting anything that is slapped with the gaming brand just because... You're a gamer, right? It's like, you can get stuff from a different brand that'll work equally as well, and cheaper. And just save up for a uh, USB mixer and an XLR microphone, trust me. If you want to do this with some semblance of professionalism, that's the way to go. And that's your, like, end game upgrade. You may as well have LED lights on your Yeti. That's the way that I feel about that product. It works. It works. It'll do the job. But if you have issues with it, you're going to have issues that are going to really make you regret purchasing it. And if you go through Reddit and just look at, like, Yeti and Static, you'll see a bunch of threads come up. Just people complaining about it and that they've had to get the microphone replace multiple times Not enough mana. so that was, yeah that's I think that's a key piece of advice you don't need to spend a lot as long as it's within a good volume and you can eliminate most of your background noise which has nothing to do with the microphone by the way most of the time like if you get a microphone that's in the 70 to 100 dollar mark they'll do that 
As long as you're not using like a five dollar microphone, you'll be fine. I guess. <laughs> Don't expect to sound as smooth as me. I have a really nice mic. Now I do. That wasn't always the case. And now that I have, uh, well, this room has acoustic foam in it, so it's been treated so it doesn't echo as much. It sounds like it's closer now than what it is. So that's the other thing that's, that's kind of enhancing it. Yeah, the previous mic was good. There was nothing wrong with it, right? But if I was to lean back in my chair, it just wouldn't pick me up. Whereas in this, this is... I can lean back in my chair and it's pretty good still. Like, this is professional level. And I bought it because, yeah, the gift voucher pretty much made it like it was- I had 40% off the price, which was pretty good. Get some cheap noise-canceling panels. Yeah, I mean, foams. It's not noise cancelling, it's like acoustic treatment, so to speak. Like, I'd learned that there's a difference between the two. One is soundproofing, which prevents noise from getting through, and the other one is acoustic treatment. Which all it does is it removes the reverb, but doesn't like lower the volume, so to speak. Oh no, I've got another obnoxious room here. Can I get real close to the mic as just a test? Uh, like real close, what, like, like this, this close. This is like my mouth is literally on the microphone right here. But I've got a compressor on this, so it would probably not be what you would expect. I don't know. It wouldn't be what you would expect, I don't think, anyway. It sounds off that close, yeah. It spikes a little, probably because I'm speaking too loudly into it. I would need to apply, like, a proper... Proper limiter and compression to it. Okay, uh, let's get rid of that. Okay, I need to look up the recipe for this. What runoid is it? It is... Sorry, give me a sec. Tirtal Arm, okay. Tia Tal Um There we go. Can't use it yet, but it's there. It's a recipe that when I'm holding that item gives me uh like a discount at vendors, which is useful. On the next level, it's the next level, right? Or is it 18? Hang on. It's okay, like, I'm gonna dump a bunch of points. It's at 18. So that gets unlocked at 18. One, two, three, four. Yep, yeah, okay, it's fine. A pop filter can help. Yeah, I have a pop filter in front of it.
Acoustic foam is a pretty good thing to do. I mean, I admittedly, I may have gone a little overboard with what I did. <laughs> Just a little bit. If you could see it, but like every wall has it. I need mana. I have it in front of me and then uh, like everywhere. It mimics like a recording booth, which I guess is nice. It definitely feels weird being in here sometimes. When I go back out, just this, it just sounds so different outside compared to in here. You don't have to go to that extent. Like, I went so long without it. But there was something that, because it's a hobby for me, like, I wanted to do it. But I could have very well continued without it. People have said it's made a difference, so it's fine. I hate these aggressive resummons. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to do it, I don't think. It ultimately depends on the room you're streaming from as well. It's smaller rooms are the ones that have the issue more. Because sound doesn't travel, doesn't need to travel as far to bounce off a wall. If you're in a larger room, it doesn't happen as much. At least that's my basic understanding of it. I could be wrong. It depends how much you want to spend, ultimately. I don't know. For someone that's starting, I, I don't think you need to do that at all. multiple summoners. And an elite? Wow. Should be fine. Poison javelin for the win. Just hit them once and they'll, they will fall. You have a lot of things to factor, especially the issue of not being in a consistent place. Ah. Uh. You have. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Don't don't overthink it. I think the main thing starting off is just Good doing it and time consistency, I guess. As long as you're consistent, it's fine. The hardest thing is actually starting it. It is. Hmm. I don't know if it's the case for everyone, but... For me, the other thing was... Because at the time, I hadn't really watched much Twitch. So the concept of talking to myself... You could tell in my voice that I'm not comfortable very early on. Like, it definitely comes through sometimes where I'm like, man, like, I'm just talking to myself. Which, uh, it's not really a thing now, like, like. I would say keep some of your older streams as well, like. 
record them, and then watch them again in future if you ever have doubt about progress. Because then you can see, oh no, you've changed in terms of how you speak and just how it sounds. Not enough mana. You feel like you have to go into a game and be 100% knowledgeable or go blind, it's a weird feeling. So I started with The Binding of Isaac as my first game, because I that, that was the exact thought I had, was like... If I'm gonna do this, I have to be knowledgeable in the game, or... I have to be, like, insanely good at it. Or... I have to be, uh, funny. Or just have zero. But I don't know, I feel like that's not the case. I guess it, it depends how you are as a person, but for me... Looking back on that, I, I didn't need to worry on that. Like, I, I didn't need to think about that, to be honest. Like, I could have probably streamed anything and been perfectly fine. Little did I know that one of my selling points was the way I talk. I wish I could read books on Twitch, that would be something that I could do, but unfortunately copyright law doesn't allow it, as it counts as a public performance. Like, I imagine that could- that- if that were to be a thing where the law changes around that, I would jump in on that. I feel like I could- I could do well in that. Could I narrate books for Audible? I haven't looked into it, but, like, if we're talking about money... Nah. I'd, I'd rather stick with the job I have. It's, it's good. It's flexible. I live comfortably, so... It would be a downgrade for me, so to speak, because then I'd have to be chasing work. If you can- I don't know- If you could do it for fun, maybe. The other thing is, like, okay. As good as you might think I sound, I did learn English as a second language, and, like, there are times where that shines through, where I, I don't pronounce words as they're intended. It does come out sometimes. I think doing that might be, like, a little bit more intense in terms of content creation. I don't know. What the fuck? was the exit to this area? I must have walked past it. I may have got an, an annoying map here. Oh, there it is. Okay, I see it. No, wait. What the f- uh, No, that's the starting area. See, this is what happens when I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm not trying to, like, blame anyone here. <laughs> it's my own fault. Huh? I'm in the dry hills. 
That's the far- okay. Here we go. We're in the right place now. See it as farm XP, I guess. Not enough mana. I think I should probably get back and get some stamina potions. This running thing is getting annoying. Dump into health. <laughs> Two more levels and then I can put all the points that I've saved. That's the thing in Australia you stream once and it was bad. Alright, listen. My first stream, no one turned up. Seriously? Yeah, that's that's not an uncommon thing, dude. Like It's not uncommon. It's actually pretty common for a lot of people to go quite a bit of time without having anyone watching them. It's a pretty common thing. It is an honor to serve you. I mean, I suppose I can put that point in, because I think it does buff that skill, doesn't it? Receive bonuses from charge strike, lightning bolt. It does, all right. So then, that'll make that more stronger. Oh. Well, see, there you go. You're, you're, you already did better than me if you had someone watch you. I had... <laughs> that stream, no one did. I still have the recording of it. I can can sort of hear it in my voice. But, you know, I'm, I have it and I'm not going to upload it because I know that it's not it's not a great stream. Yeah, I, I, I guess that's the thing to remember, is like... Hang on. I'm looking at this map trying to orient myself. I guess go up here. There's just too many people doing it th these days. Like, streaming. So standing out is, uh, is a task. Which is why, ugh, I hate to say it, but networking kind of is important. And not to use it in those words, but like... I started on Twitch without watching anyone, pretty much. Yeah, so like, I went into it, I started streaming, I hadn't been in anyone's chat. No, like, no one knew about me at all. And I started streaming, and somehow, like, I, I got pretty lucky. I didn't spend that long without having anyone watching, thankfully. Otherwise, I probably would have given up, to be honest. But if you watch people's streams, and then, you know, you're kind of known in a particular community, or you have, like, a group of fr ah! Almost died. 
<laughs> group of friends, then more likely than not, they're going to turn up to that stream if they can. So you kind of have a one up there. Yeah, this is why I'm dumping points into health now. This will become less of an issue as I go. I just needed to get my st my stats up so I can equip all the weapons I want to equip. It is risky. People usually dump points into vitality before anything else, but... Wait, Markiplier made one million in a year, under a year? You mean subscribers? Yeah, but... <sighs> that's like a... That's a flawed mentality, I guess. Because it kind of trivializes what the dude had to probably do to get to that point. When that happens to someone, there's a multitude of factors. It's like, it could be individual talent. It could be the dude was in the right place at the right time and just did something that needed to be done. Or said something that needed to be said. You can't predict these things. But if you look at the number of people that have tried to do the same thing in a, in a year, like... Yeah, it just doesn't happen. Here's the thing, don't- don't think about what other people have done and how you compare to them, that's not a good thing to do. Focus on what, I guess, you feel like would be your own personal strength. It might not be obvious right away. Love this loot to cube button. Not here. Your strength is consistently being inconsistent. That's, I just mean in terms of okay, it could be skill, it could be lack of skill, it could be that you're funny. It could be that you have a chill voice. It could be that you talk about a bunch of random stuff. Like, maybe you like engaging in conversations about certain topics. Maybe you like being a source of information to people. Maybe you like doing playthroughs of games in weird ways. Maybe you want a speedrun. I don't know. Uh, I'm just thinking. Right? I think it's here. Yeah. It could just be that you pick a game that you just stick to that game and be known in that community, that's also another avenue. Yeah, I mean, I've said it before, like, don't feel like you need to know what you want to do. I don't think that's an answer you need to have right away. And that's the thing, sometimes you might have a plan, but then along the way you kind of figure something's better.
I hate traversing this desert looking for the exits properly. I should be throwing more javelins. Yeah, I mean, don't overthink it, dude. Just, I would say the more important thing is starting and then figuring out where you want to go is, like, secondary, in all honesty. Have a starting point, think about where you want to start, and then go from there. <laughs> You're very sure I didn't have a niche? Well, no. Not one that uh, I realized at least right away. Good day. To be honest, initially I didn't really have a plan. It was kind of just... Greetings. I'll play a bunch of games that I like and see what, what sticks. That was the whole thing. Where the fuck is this exit? <laughs> I've, I've missed it. Where is it? Don't tell me it's on low ground. That, no, if there's stairs, it usually means it's above the stairs. Yeah, just don't, don't overthink it. It's hard to not overthink things sometimes, especially if you want something... To be successful, like... I think with streaming, it's just... At the point now, it's it's very saturated that even... The most well-thought-out plan might not necessarily pan out at all. So, I wouldn't plan it out too much. It's probably more important to start, because... In the time that you're not starting, you might very well miss a window... Where maybe you might figure out something cool, or... There's always an element to the right place at the right time, that's the thing. Especially in terms of people that frequent your stream, like... There are a lot of my viewers where it is pretty much, if I had not been streaming that day or playing that game at that particular time, I never would have met them. Like, take Lelo, for example. The only reason I know him is because one night after, like, maybe a couple of years of not playing it, I decided to play The Binding of Isaac, and he was working a security job, so for him, it was really late. He works uh, the dead hours of the night. And yeah, he popped in. And then I didn't play Isaac again. <laughs> For until recently. But, you know, dude... I consider him, like, one of the, uh... The good friends I have here. And that wouldn't have happened. It's just one of those things. It's just luck. Oh, for fuck's sake. I know you can't hear it, but I'm listening to Flying Lotus, and it's like very relaxing music, but the situation is not relaxing at all. Hey, Sandy, thank you so much for the 13 months. Hold up. Can't. <sighs> Go away. Thank you. Okay, there we go. My follower died. I should probably rehire it. 
I have to neglect chat just for a little bit. I, I have to pay attention here. These dudes are assholes. I don't want to die. Wait, that's a. Uh... I am overburdened. I am overburdened. Is that a four? No, it's a one. Okay. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. I'm just kicking back with this and listening to music. I didn't really feel like doing much today, so. That's what I'm doing. This is something I used to do on stream, was play Diablo and listen to music when I didn't feel like doing much. So, I'm playing hardcore, so if I die, that's the end of my character. I'd say that's the non-relaxing aspect of it. stamina thing. I just want to get to the next area. I need to go recharge my javelins. In summation, don't overthink streaming, just do it. <laughs> I guess that's... I'm not to say that I'm one that can impart a lot of knowledge on the topic, because... I'm not there, quite there, <laughs> but... I have enough from, like, the early days that I can say, just don't overthink it. Where is this? This is an annoying map. I'm getting fooled by these stairs. I went around the perimeter of the whole thing, it's not there. Okay, hang on, what's up here? The cellar is over there. No, that's a diff. Ugh. It wouldn't be in that direction because that leads to the other part of the map. I'll try up here. Wait, where is this leading? That is the previous area, isn't it? I'll just go recharge my javelin, screw it. Oops. Blessings to you. Welcome to my shop. Okay. I may as well get my follower back. Who goes there? Uh, she is level 11, I am level 16. I should probably rehire her. Not here.
It's just easier than trying to level her up. Okay. Hello again, Outlander. Word of your great exploits in the East has reached us, even here. <laughs> Alexa. Sorry if I set off anyone's uh, assistant. I am overburdened. I'll put that to good use. I'll put that to good use. It's a hipster spelling of Alexa. Alright, well, I'm just gonna check that corner of the map. It would have to be that. Oh, looky here. That's where it was. Okay. There we go. What an annoying map. Okay. I hope I know what I'm doing. I remember the first time I played this. <laughs> There's a part of this particular map where the snakes kind of swarm you in a room. And because when- alright, when you're playing softcore, or normal, when you, when you die, your character drops all their gear. And you have to go collect it off the body. I got myself into this situation where... The combination of what was there, pretty much, they instant- They would just move really quickly and instantly kill me. And they were guarding the door. So, I was like, fuck, did I just lose all my gear? It's, oh, okay, nope. Yeah, this- I need to be careful. Anyway, it took like about an hour to get my gear back and- Ended up having to get outside help <laughs> to get someone to walk into the temple. Distract them long enough for me to get my gear back. It was funny. That's not going to happen here. If I die, I'm dead, so... Just don't die. Ugh, this is obnoxious. I hate when this happens. I might not be able to get through this door. It's one of the many tiny little flaws about this game. You can get into scenarios where, like... These enemies, they'll keep spawning shit, they'll keep shooting stuff, and then you can't get past them. Okay, there we go. Ugh, that was annoying. Hmm. <laughs> Might have to go back to town and get more potions. Oh no, it's the same thing again. Okay. 
Is that 18? No. Uh, next level, I'll invest all the points I've been saving up. I'm pretty sure I can equip the other armor I've been saving as well. Virtual hugging around away from you, right? Nah. Sometimes people have to dip. But I would say it was a discussion more than anything. Pretty lengthy one at that. There's only so much you can talk about when it comes to, like, streaming and feelings around streaming before it starts getting a little too self-indulgent. Okay, let's go back to town real quick. Yes? Good morning. Hello. Streaming's individual. Yeah. It is. Is that the right way to say it? Uh, I guess. I mean, alright, everyone has their own journey when it comes to it, I guess. But there's definitely things that are common to one another in terms of, like... Beginnings and, I guess, mental state as you are stream. That's stuff that you can, that is common. Yeah, these fuckers. I was running out of scrolls. I should probably take, like, an intermission. In, in terms of the video, I'm looking at it and it's like at the three hour mark, so that's probably a decent chunk of content. Since, since now that I'm recording this, I guess, I guess I should think of it in terms of that. I'll reach the, uh, what do you call it? The Arcane Sanctuary, or whatever it's called. Oh no. Oh, they're cold. Okay. Back out. I need mana. So this will probably end up on YouTube. We'll see. Uh, to be honest, I was expecting me playing this today, like, it would just be me. 
like no difference, but it's been nice. I know that Diablo is not really everyone's cup of tea. But I don't know, there's just something about this game for me that I'm able to turn my brain off and kind of just play it and experience it. Wait, I forgot to... I forgot to get the waypoint. Like, I can hold a conversation and <laughs> play it for whatever reason. Even in hardcore. Oh, it's that way. I think it's easier just to go back. Plus, I can recharge javelins. Good day. Okay. Yeah, it's nice to have this game to unwind with. But I know, like, in terms of streaming, <laughs> it, it kind of divides the audience a little. It's fine, like, I'll just do the rest of it off stream. Or maybe when I'm feeling like, ah, no. Those dudes are assholes. Yeah, maybe if I feel like playing it one late night, I can. I've just been playing it more on Discord because then I can freely stream the music and everything together. Whereas in with this, I have to just stream the music through Discord and then here is just the game play. At least this game kind of lends well to not having music. Like, it's atmospheric enough that I don't think it needs music. Wait, what? Oh, right, this is three, so I need to go in. What? That's weird. Usually, okay, I'm used to going in from... Oh, no, no, that's an elite, that's an elite, get out. They're guarding. Okay, hit him with poison, that should be enough. It slows pace, is more simplistic, and might need knowledge, interest in it to already get views on it. Well, I mean, the issue wasn't that I wouldn't get views like I would. It's just, it's one of those games where the people that watch it, and not all of, not everyone, right? But like, odds are, if they're going to watch content, it would have to be of a similar vein. Like, it would have to be in the genre of looter games. I can't say I had many people that watched me play Diablo, that started watching me play Diablo, that would watch me play, say, Risk of Rain or, like, a Kirby game. The like, they just don't appear until I play something that is similar to Diablo. It has a very loyal viewer base, I guess, is the way to put it. Which, for someone that does varied content, it's a bit of a difficult sell to ask them to, like, come watch other stuff. That's why I don't want to lean too heavily into it, because, yeah, then when I would play something else, no one would watch, <laughs> pretty much. So, that's one of these things that I'll play every now and then. Okay, uh, what would I lose? I would lose 34 defense. And 10 strength, which would probably fuck me over, let me see. No, it doesn't fucking- Okay, the belt. I lose the belt. So I need to get 10 strength. Okay. I need to increase my strength by 10, which I can do. Next level, that's where it'll really start to work. 
Not in town. Not in town. Diablo is a niche game. Uh, a bit, yeah. I mean, like I said, that's people that watch Diablo probably won't watch anything other than Diablo or something similar, like Path of Exile or like Anthem or Destiny. Like it has to be in that genre. I'm happy to enjoy this off stream more than anything. You'll be lurking no matter what I play. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, I said, uh, alright, I promise the moment I get, I said I was gonna stop for a little bit, but I kept going. I said when I got to the Arcane Sanctuary, I'm already in the Arcane Sanctuary. See, it's quick for me to go overboard with this. I mean, I guess I could say until the end of Act 2, we're, we're not that far away from the end, but... Like, my my speed at which I'm doing this is going to accelerate once I hit the next level, because then all these high-level skills are going to come in. And it's going to up my damage. It's just right now. Damage is good, but it could be better. The problem with this particular area is, like, I have a 1 in 4 chance of getting it correct. So, this could be an area that lasts 10 minutes, or it could be one that lasts, like, close to an hour. Okay, good. <laughs> Got it right. Like, it could last an hour. I think I need to build up my resistances. I'm being harassed too much here. <laughs> you wish there was an FPS that was like Diablo. Isn't, isn't that what Borderlands is supposed to be? Oh, cool. Yeah. Poison Javelin for the win. Just hit him once and then we're good. Not in faith is... I feel no pity for... Stay a while and listen. Hello. Uh, lightning resist. What, what is my other ring? Cold resist. Okay, this one can be replaced with lightning resist. Borderlands went kind of hill. Kind of downhill. I haven't played. That's one of those games that you definitely need people to play it with. Not here. I'm just looking at what else I can do from a gear perspective to kind of help me out. Greetings. Not here. Not in town. 
this is at level 21. Okay, so that's still a while away. Okay, where am I going? I am looking for the... Okay, I know where that one is. I should probably try and level up before I get in there. What the fuck? Why are you throwing that way? There must be an enemy in that direction that it auto-targeted. Can be a little jank. Wait, was that the right one? Down, down, right? No, that's... Which one is it? Square. Circle. No, that's, sorry, crescent moon. That's circle. It must be on the other side, then. I almost went in the wrong tomb. I'm debating whether or not I should take on this boss. That's the one. Okay. Ooh, okay. Feel compelled to waste the five hundred thousand. I mean, if you want. To be honest, I've been tempted to get rid of it. Just the amount of times that people are like, "I must get it." The other reason I put it in there was because we like channel points needed to come up with a use, and people wanted a use. So that was my elegant solution. I, I don't know, like, for, oh my god, stop summoning. It's an elite, isn't it? Oh, there's mul- yep, fuck me, there's multiple. Alright, hit him with a javelin and then run. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't think of anything that would be non-disruptive in terms of channel points. I guess that they don't make sense for, like, what I do. Like, having to stop and do something just because someone redeemed points, I don't know. That being said, I have done, like, for Wrath of the Lamb, that was a good example of a good use of them. And I did used to have, like, on the Binding of Isaac, when I got- I reached the point where I was trying to get items and it didn't matter what character I picked, I would go pick the character for me. So that made sense. There is the B- I think the BRB screen is honestly the redeem that's like something that is worthy because it's a per it's a permanent thing, you know? You end up on the BRB messages, so if that's... I think that's the better redeem than the, uh, the waste of bucks. And, yeah, I mean, your name goes next to it, so... Hmm. 
The more I say it, the more I should probably scrap the waste of bucks and just make the highest one the BRB message. It kind of makes sense. It does take a while to reach that number, still. Oh, this tomb is so annoying with the summoners. Okay. Uh, I mean, I should be able to last a little. Anyway, I'd only got 19 javelins, never mind. Good evening. I was thinking about it from a health perspective. Not in town. Not in town. Not in town. You're proud of the Kiwi shaving thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's one of those things where it's an inside joke. If you were there, you were there. Everyone else will be confused by it, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, I don't even remember what game I was playing when it happened, so... Someone, I'm sure, at some point is gonna watch the YouTube footage and then be like, what the fuck? That's the other thing I wish I had more time for, I was just... <laughs> editing content, you know? It's a very time-intense thing. It's something I can't really do. I do it when I have time, but then, of course, stuff will slip through the cracks, like, where certain conversations happened. It's- it'll- it's there somewhere. Somewhere will stumble- someone will stumble across it, I'm sure. Oh my god, these... Oh shit, nope. Yep, that's an obnoxious room. This game has a lot of scenarios where I feel like... It shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> Like, enemies hugged up against doors is one. Or, or like, rooms where summoners are just in such a close proximity to one another that it's a fucking grind to get through them. Okay, go in. That's it. Thank you. Hit him with a poison javelin so they should die. It happens a lot. Another bad one for melee specifically is just... The enemy's default behavior is kind of to swarm the player and surround them. So then you kind of get stuck and you can't move and then you'll just die. Like, you have to keep sort of stepping backwards so they don't do that. 
Okay, I need to put points into strength. Is that enough? Not one more level into strength. Okay. Okay, so now we unlock the next tier of abilities. I'll do like one one in each next level in that. Oh yeah, right. Now we rebind that. And that, there we go. Not here. Is this one better? 12 to 30, 20% increase, 7%. I think this one's better because of the attack speed from memory. It does have a larger stack, but this one replenishes, but the replenish rate is slow. Okay, two more levels, then I'll get the shield, which will then carry me for the rest of this difficulty. Yeah, there's a lot of moments in this game that's very clench. But now with, with this, it should be easier. These plague javelins should fuck up most things. And my stab is gonna be very strong as well. Now just throw one plague javelin and it should get most of the stuff in the, in the radius. Wow. I keep getting this room over and over again. Javelin, javelin, there we go. They're dead. Holy crap, I've already gotten a third of an XP bar. <laughs> I don't know if I'm underleveled or this area is just really good. Maybe a bit of both. Well, they only give XP for the first summon the summon creatures. I think I'm. L you know what? What am I lacking? The I think it's the helm. I could have a better armor rating. That's not it. I might just buy a, a helm. I might- what I might do, just to ensure that I don't get fucked up, is just go back to Act 1 and hit level 21 so then I can equip that shield. The fuck? There we go. Because that shield will up my resistances by quite a bit. I don't know, this boss. I need mana. I'm sure I can do it. It's just... I think it'll be a little sketchy. I need mana. Okay. 
Oh, right, you gotta... It's a little clunky. Okay, but it's here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Good to see you. There's nothing wrong with turtling in hardcore. <laughs> you do what you gotta do. Hello. Not in. Hello. Alright, I just did mana potions and I'm just gonna go throw javelins in Act 1. <laughs> okay, uh. Stonyfield's a good spot. They should still grant me enough XP. as much as I would like. Maybe Black Marsh. It's moving. Okay, I have I have an idea. I'll just go into another cavern, like one of the tombs that I don't need to go into. Yeah, that's better. I should be able to do it quickly. Alright, let's start with this one. Especially if they're as annoying as the other tomb. Yeah, I mean, to it's the first area, so I don't blame it for not really being that XP intense. Yeah, this should be done in no time. I hate how it has to be the same type or it doesn't auto stack. Okay, this... Let me see what this is. It could be stats. Poison damage, I'm good. Very poor stats for a big inventory slot. Oh no. It's another one of these el elite summoners. You're impressed they make it auto stack. Uh, just on controller. <laughs> Would you believe it? This is a little scary. It's okay, plague javelins are doing work. Burn through these potions like it's no tomorrow. Thank you. I 
I got that controller's not everyone's preference, but there are a lot of uh, quality of life things that controller has in this game that just makes it a little better in my opinion, depending on the character you're playing. That cell makes you angry, don't know why you keep playing. <laughs> it's cause it, uh, there's a part of your brain that receives uh, a little bit of a dopamine hit, despite the pain it puts you through. The annoying thing is here, I gotta walk. I can't teleport back. Otherwise I'll, I'll lose the spot that I... I put before the, uh... the boss. Being unnecessary evil. Okay, this tomb is clear. I mean... Almost a level up from one tomb, that's not bad. I just want to be sure that I'm equipped. Big chance you would have derped and use a portal. <laughs> yeah. I've done that a couple times. Oh, the Arcane Sanctuary is actually another pretty good spot to go. But I feel like that one's more of a pain to traverse back. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Let's pick another one. I suppose I should kill everything that's out here. It's locked. It's locked. Oh, you won't miss the big fight, unless you plan to take half an hour <laughs> on a bathroom break. Which some people do, they... Take the time to read and do a bunch of other stuff. Okay. And I just ripped through them. Okay. Uh, uh, is there anything else? No, no passives. Do an equal level up and then the rest will go into plague. For a few levels at least.
This tomb is a little bit underwhelming compared to the other one. Uh, let's check out the chain gloves. Poison reduction, yeah, length reduced, I'll take that. I do need to start looking at upgrading stuff. On to Hunt Showdown, a less raging juicing game. <laughs> Fair. I have a lot of patience for games. There's been very few games that have made me genuinely angry. I mean, frustration is there for sure, but... And sometimes I do play it up a little. But for the most part, I'm pretty patient. Oh, shit. See, I'm ripping through their health now. That jab is really good on single target. Oh, right. Forgot. There we go. I can now swap out to the other armor. Do I need to? 144. I mean, the other one gives... I guess when I get the shield, it'll make sense, because then I'll rebalance my resistances. Right now, it's giving me more than what that single piece can offer. I need a key. Ugh. <laughs> Should probably turn this on. It's easy. Sometimes it's easier to turn on classic graphics because then you can see what I'm actually running into. Sometimes you collide with stuff and it doesn't make sense. And the reason that happens is because at the end of the day, it ultimately has to translate it to this. Good evening. Good evening. Not here. Arctic. That's yeah, Arctic binding. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> Mana problems. Okay, one more should do it, and then that'll bring me in line the defense I should have at this point. No, two more levels. Shit, it's not one more level. Uh, I mean... Uh, let's... I thought it was gonna be one more level. It's two more levels. I might... Just have to say fuck it and try it because I'm gonna run out of stuff to kill, I think. I mean at the very least I'll I'll up the the plague javelin enough. I think that's the important part is having plague javelin at a, at a good enough level. Because that will be what I'm using. <laughs> Not enough mana, yeah. 
I keep spamming the button. We'll see. I can't carry anymore. This has been very good to me so far. Yeah, green items, they're not like D3 where set items are amazing. I already know what that is, it's not great, but I'll pick it up in the cube anyway. I don't think there's any endgame builds that involve set items. A complete set, I should say. They might involve like individual pieces, because some individual pieces offer utility. I kind of prefer it that way, to be honest. Like, 3 has too much of a focus on set items. <laughs> one defense, one strength. Oh, useless little one. Yeah, I think I might just have to try. I know I'm capable. It's just it's a little bit, a little bit of a clench. Just after I level up. Something summoning through the door is. Oh, no, okay. I need to swap these slots around. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I can operate certain things as quick as a mouse. Like, I do swaps pretty quickly. Pretty well optimized UI. Not enough mana. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, there we go. There's a wall here. It's weird seeing, like, I, I get that this is how it looked like originally, but. The frame rate, I think, is what messes with me the most. It just doesn't feel right. It messes with my eyes a little. That was a largely disappointing room. Two ghosts. Okay. Uh... Let's just go in here. Wait. Nearly there. Not enough mana. Oh. 
Oh, jeez. That was close. That's why you have panic button health. I'm sorry, but I hate that these things can attack you through the wall. Nah, I need to back off. I don't have heal. Oh shit, I did. Alright, whatever. I know I've lost my place, but it's fine. Like, it, better that than dying. I had to do that right away. Not in town. Not here. Okay, fuck. No wonder the door wouldn't open. Why is it hitting me? There's gotta be multiple. Yep, that's what it is. There we go. I was being hit by like three projectiles at once, that's why it was hitting me so hard. That one in the back. Okay, um, that's as far as I'm gonna take it level wise, I should go fight now. Okay. Vitality. Um, this happens at level 24, so I need to hold that experience point for that. Greetings. Good morning. Oh yeah, right, I forgot about this. Gold, defense, yeah, I can get rid of all those. I'm just making the necessary adjustments here. There's nothing the right um, take five of these. Okay. Uh, it was the one with two arrows, right? This one. Yep. Okay. Uh, fuck, this is a labyrinth. I've already cleared it, so hang on. Pretty sure it was down this corner. There might be the odd thing or two alive. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. You. Wait, give it to the follower. Take that, and then we go and hope for the best. Okay, I got enough poison off that it's not gonna matter. The follow was basically a distraction, so I could get that to happen. I feel bad, but that's what you gotta do. You gotta use them as a meat shield sometimes. Okay, uh, I'll keep that from when I s swap helms. 
pylon might be good. Yeah, the concern wasn't the damage, it's just, like... He slows you down, and if he gets a heavy hit on you, it hurts like a motherfucker. <laughs> That's the main issue with them. So I got, I got pretty lucky that he went after my follower right away. And I was able to poison him. That had drained a lot of his health very quickly. Okay. This is pretty much like Terraria, in the sense that... The things you should be more afraid of is what happens in between the bosses. Whilst the bosses can be problematic, I think elites in this game are way more scary in terms of hardcore. Not greeting you. Good day. Not here. I have resurrected Alexa. Okay. Greeting, Gerontel. And we sail east. I mean, look, the cutscene is fine. This is good day. Welcome. Okay, and this is where I'm gonna take a five minute intermission on Twitch. But since this is now going on YouTube, this is where this VOD ends, I guess. Two acts, I'm still alive. Uh, yeah, I'll be back in, like, five minutes. I'm just gonna stretch my legs, go to the bathroom, get a drink, all that stuff. As for YouTube, next video, onwards. <laughs>